Oh my god, it's my birthday again. Another year older, but am I any wiser? So, I'm another year older, and I guess I've probably learned quite a bit in the last year or so. Uh, because in just about a month, I will have officially been living in an RV for a full year. So I figured, why not? Let's talk about that. And I suppose the first thing that I could say about, you know, living in an RV is that it's not exactly what you think that it's going to be. I see a lot of YouTube videos basically selling this dream, selling the uh, the awesomeness, the freedom, the, the carefree nature of living in an RV. And I think they're lying, just flat out lying. You as an RVer are going to have to do things so much differently than everyone else that unless you are just completely and totally uh, hopping from RV campground to RV campground, you are going to find yourself in some very difficult and sometimes compromising situations that you're generally not used to. And I just don't think that the other YouTube channels actually sell that stuff. They don't tell you enough about how just complicated things can be when you're not on grid, when you're not acclimated to being self-sufficient or out there boondocking. There are lots of stuff that they just don't tell you. They just don't give you the considerations that I think that most new or wanting to be full-time RVers need to know. There's a lot of information that you just don't know. One of those is being that if you like air-conditioned air and air-conditioned environment, if you're planning on boondocking, you might as well just go ahead and get yourself a generator right out of the gate. Oversize that generator too. Have one that isn't going to max out every single time you turn this thing on. Get something that's much bigger than what your AC actually requires. So if your AC say pulls 15 amps, make sure that you get something that's maybe 50 to 60% more heavier duty than that so that you don't run your generator at maximum speed the entire time that you're using it. Because if you don't, you're just gonna wear it out even faster. You don't want that thing just cranking it at, at maximum level the entire time, you'll just burn it out really, really fast. So get some oversize, all of your components, anything that you think you're gonna need, upsize that just so that you have a little headroom for all that other stuff. The second thing you're gonna need to consider is your solar, if you plan to do solar. It's not going to be sufficient to run an AC. It's not gonna be sufficient enough to run everything in your coach without a massive amount of expense. Um, not to mention roof space. If you just don't have it to over panel for those heavy energy consumption needs, uh, it's just not gonna be enough. You'll be able to run just about everything else, uh, maybe hot water heater for a little while, maybe a space heater for a little bit. You might even be able to get the rooftop AC turned on in uh, a few circumstances, but overall, it's just not going to be enough that you're going to be able to sustain that lifestyle. You're not running this thing overnight for 12 straight hours with no sunshine. It's just not gonna happen. You're going to chew through all of that immediately. So again, we're going back to AC. Almost everything else is pretty damn good, except for the AC, except for your heating elements. They're gonna eat their. They're gonna eat your batteries. Now everything else you can pretty much run almost indefinitely with the right size battery system. Inductive loads like an AC, like refrigerators, like stuff like that. They are extremely high draw appliances, and if you don't have the battery capacity to feed into those systems, you're just gonna not be running those systems. Period. And end of story. And that whole van life thing. Um, look, I realize that it is much easier to be uh, incognito in van life as opposed to RV life, but the vast majority of people just weren't made to be hunched over all the time or to be sitting crisscross applesauce or Indian style whilst in their living quarters. Um, I, do I, I do think that there are lots of people that like to genuinely live outdoors, and in those particular cases, I think that van life uh, is extremely feasible. 
you just don't see it with most people or a lot of people for extended periods of time. You may find a few of these YouTubers that have, they're so balls deep in the facade that they almost can't get out of their van. They almost have to keep it going because that's what they built their channel on. They started, oh, well, I'll just make a few videos about my van build, blah, 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 blah. And now they're just stuck in that rut because every single person that watches their channel started watching because of this van build. Now, even though they cannot stand it, they've got to stay in it to keep making that cash. And if I'm being completely honest, most of them probably don't even live in the van full time. They spend just enough time in it to make their videos and then they're back in something bigger, maybe even a house. Now, the other thing you should know is that all of these RVs are a depreciating asset. Mine is a depreciating asset. Yours is a depreciating asset. That super duper awesome half a million dollar class A is a depreciating asset. So while you might think you want the latest and greatest, something with all the newest bells and whistles, there's a really good chance that it's just not going to be a wise investment for you. So my advice to almost anyone that hasn't done it yet, but is looking into it as maybe a possible full-time uh, reality for themselves, is to definitely buy used. Um, my camper happens to be a 1977. It is now 42 years old, just like me. And this camper uh, was completely depreciated. Like I pay almost nothing in taxes to renew the tag for this camper. So uh, it had lost every bit of its value when I had bought it. So what I bought it for was basically for the time, effort, and energy that the people who flipped it put into it before I bought it. So don't buy something that brand spanking new. You're never gonna get your money back out of it. So in my opinion, the new market is just a completely dead market.